Hello everyone, my name is Brennan Marr. That noise you're hearing is my ventilator. And thank you for tuning in to Page Turners, They Were Not My Star Wars Podcast. Welcome indeed. Today is Tuesday, or at least I am recording this on a Tuesday. Today is the day we like to talk about hot or controversial topics. But today is going to be a hot topic. Luke Skywalker's greatest moments. I am going to give you five moments plus two runners up that I believe are the greatest moments in Luke Skywalker's career. Taking us all the way from his beginnings in the asteroid field of Polis Massa to becoming one with the Force, an Acto, years and years later. Luke Skywalker has gone many places and done many things, both in the movies and in other sources. So today, I'm going to give you his greatest moments in this long and storied journey. Let us begin with our runners up. The first runner up is a moment that I never picked up on until Sam Witwer, the voice of Darth Maul in the animated series, both in Rebels and in Clone Wars. It was a moment he pointed out in Return of the Jedi. And if he had not pointed that out, I would have missed it completely. So credit must go to Sam Whitworth for this one. And that is when the Rebels are captured by the Ewoks. Luke tells Han, it'll be all right. Han is about to blast some of the Ewoks. And Luke grabs him and basically says, Don't. You know, it's going to be... A, I think his exact words are, Han, don't. It'll be all right. Those, I believe, are his exact words. Based on his experience with Yoda in The Empire Strikes Back, of underestimating a strange creature and learning his lesson, Luke has learned the value of trusting that people can be more than what they see. At least that is Sam Whitworth's hypothesis. And I think I agree. Luke discovered not to underestimate people. And he, at that moment, seemed pretty calm with the Ewoks. With the idea that he knew the Ewoks were more than what they seemed. And further, he knew that if they were to play along, they could win the Ewoks to their cause. Luke understood this because of the lessons he learned in the Empire Strikes Back. The people are not always what they seem, and that help can be found in unlikely places. And because of Luke's calmness, his passivity, and the little help from the Force, they were able to win the Ewoks to their cause. So that is the first runner-up. The second runner-up for Luke is lifting the X-Wing out of the ocean on Octo in the Rise of Skywalker. 
What an incredible moment that was for me. It all came full circle. Luke had seen Yoda lift the X-Wing. And now Luke had become the Yoda to Rey. And did the same thing. And also in her case, I gave her a ship so that she could go and save the day. Since she had burned Kylo's play silencer. A beautiful moment. And of course, deliberately using the Yoda theme in the music. An incredible moment of Luke being there for Rey to help her confront her fear and become a Jedi. So that's the second runner-up. All right. We're now going to get into the top five. Now, five, four, and three are in no particular order. Two and one are deliberately in order, and to me are the greatest Luke moments. You may disagree, you may think of other ones, but regardless, this is just my own opinion. So yet again, five, four, and three are in no particular order. Number five, Luke turning off his targeting computer during the Battle of Yavin. In the original Star Wars film, Luke Skywalker turns off his targeting computer and through the strength of the Force is able to fire those torpedoes just right that they enter the exhaust port on the Death Star. Exploiting Galen Urso's trap. There was a video I watched, and I cannot for the life of me remember, that pointed out the difference between story and plot. The plot of the movie is that the Death Star needs to be destroyed. So the plot reaches its climax when the Death Star blows up. But Luke's personal story reaches its climax when he trusts in the Force, turns off his targeting computer, and through trusting in what he now knows, what Obi-Wan has taught him, he is able to make that shot. That moment is the climax of Luke's story. Embracing the Force. Which is actually the first time that he does. Really. I mean, you could argue at what point in the battle does he do it. But that's really the big moment that he embraces the power of the Force and lets it flow through him. So number five, Luke turning off his targeting computer. Number four, Luke pulling the lightsaber to him in the Wampa Cave on Hoth in The Empire Strikes Back. Luke has been captured by the Wampa and hung upside down in the Snow Creature's Cave. Luke's lightsaber has fallen from his belt into the snow. Luke calms himself and reaches out with the strength of the Force and pulls the lightsaber to him and is able to cut himself out of the ice and escape the Wampa Cave. This is a great moment because you notice Luke tries and fails. But when he kind of calms himself, he closes his eyes, he takes a deep breath, 
and he is able to pull it toward him. Demonstrating that the force takes patience, but furthermore that one must be in a calm state to use it. At least, ideally, use the force in a calm state. So that's my number four, Luke, pulling the lightsaber in the world for kids. Number three, the battle at the pit of Kharkoon. Ah, this is the moment when Luke's plan to rescue his friends from Jabba the Hutt goes into full motion. But to be very clear, there were probably easier ways of saving his friends. Well, we're not going to get into that other than to say it's a pretty convoluted plan. But the moment here that makes it is when Luke is about to fall or be pushed off the plank into the Sarlacc. He salutes R2-D2 and R2-D2 launches Luke's new lightsaber into his master's hand. And in that moment, Luke Skywalker ignites his green lightsaber. Yep. Luke Skywalker, in that moment, goes into full Jedi warrior mode. And a glorious scene, indeed. It's just an awesome, awesome visually. The green saber looks so much better with that imagery than the blue lightsaber would have. And Luke rescues his friend, saves the day, and bids adieu to that vile gangster Jabba the Hutt. Number three, Luke Skywalker at the Pit of Carcoon in Return of the Jedi. All right, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, I will give you my top two, which are in order as, in my opinion, the greatest moments of Luke Skywalker. See you in a minute. Hello there, this is Brennan Marr, host of Page Turners They Were Not, a Star Wars podcast. And I'm here to tell you about Anchor. Anchor is the best way to make a podcast. Why is that? Well, first off, it's free. Yes, you heard me right. Anchor is free. Anchor has all the tools you need to make a podcast. From your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you on various platforms, including Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You can make money from your podcast. And get this, with no minimum listenership. That means you can make money even if no one listens to your podcast. That, of course, is not ideal, as Anchor will allow you to spread your podcast, bring in more viewers, and you can make more money because of it. Everything you need to make a podcast is in one place on Anchor. If you're interested, download the free Anchor app, or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you, and may the force be with you. And we're back. All right. Time for my top two. Number two. Luke Skywalker. Force projection at the Battle of Crate in the Last Jedi. Luke Skywalker finally learned his lesson. Now, it came as a shock to many people 
that the great Jedi Master Luke Skywalker, who we saw become a Jedi in the original trilogy, would then become this grumpy old man who wanted the Jedi to end living on this planet out away from everybody. It, it came as a shock to us that he would be out there in self-imposed exile wasting away wanting to die. Now I've discussed at length my feelings on this. And I believe that it makes our character all the more believable to see his challenges. Now, obviously we do not watch Star Wars for believability or realism. But when it comes to characters, I think we do. I think characters in movies, no matter how ridiculous the circumstances they are in, that emotional truth should be there. And I believe that the emotional truth of Luke's journey made perfect sense. Uh, because he had held himself up to an impossibly high standard that he could never meet, and also because of the responsibility of being the the last Jedi for many years. I mean, certainly we could argue about that, but at least on screen. Luke, of course, learned his lesson. With help from Rey, with help from Yoda. And Luke finally became the legend that he was meant to be by projecting himself from Octo to Crate, distracting his angry nephew, Kylo Ren, Ben Solo, so that the resistance could escape to fight another day and continue the spark that would restore freedom to the galaxy. Luke Skywalker saved the galaxy again. Now, I have discussed in a, in a previous podcast that there are connections with the hero with a thousand faces. During the writing of the Star Wars original trilogy, George Lucas was influenced by the book The Hero with a Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell studied mythology to look at the parallels that many cultures share in their respective mythologies. Now obviously he did much more than that. But his most famous book is called The Hero with a Thousand Faces where he lays out what is called the hero's journey or the monomyth. And the basic stepping stones on the journey of heroes in world mythology. There is a three sections on the hero's journey. I mean, there are many, many steps, but there are three basic sections. And the third section I was not aware of till just recently, in my mind, fits almost exactly with Luke's journey in The Last Jedi and the sequel trilogy in general. Um, so I won't get into it here, but please look it up. Please look up the monomyth, the hero with a thousand faces, and see if it connects to Star Wars 
in your mind. So, regardless, I do believe that Luke not only was emotionally true in the way he was presented in The Last Jedi, but also I believe that it does fit what Star Wars originally was based on. The, the original idea of the hero's journey or the mono myth. Alright. That being said, this moment is incredible. Because in this moment, Luke Skywalker uses a force power that is beyond anything we've seen before. It cost him his life. It's a sad moment. But Luke dies a hero dies fulfilling everything the Jedi should stand for. The Jedi in the prequel era had fallen because they had turned to war and turned away from what the Jedi should do. The Jedi should be guardians of peace and justice. Luke Skywalker, in that moment, through a moment of non-violence, saved the galaxy. To me, that is everything the Jedi should stand for. He died to preserve peace and justice. So he was the guardian of peace and justice. It was an act of compassion. And he saved the day non-violently. To me, that is what the Jedi should be. And that is what the Jedi Knights of the time of the prequel era had forgotten. Luke was the greatest Jedi who ever was in that moment. Alright, speaking of nonviolence, Let's talk about our number one, in my mind, the greatest Luke Skywalker moment. The moment that Luke saved the galaxy for the first time. He saved it for the second time in The Last Jedi. And, and the sequel trilogy in general, because The Last Jedi and its contributions in The Rise of Skywalker. The first time that Luke Skywalker saved the galaxy through nonviolence. Now, to be clear, you can argue that Luke Skywalker saved the galaxy three times. First, when he destroyed the original Death Star. Second, in the moment we're about to discuss. And third, saving the Resistance in The Last Jedi. All right. The greatest Luke moment, in my opinion, is on the second Death Star. When Luke throws down his lightsaber. Luke Skywalker vanished, or hid in the shadows, I should say. Hid in the shadows underneath the Emperor's platform where his throne was. Luke hid in the shadows during his fight with Vader. Vader taunts him and uses the Force to rip information out of Luke's mind, revealing that Maya is Luke's sister and therefore Vader's daughter. Vader taunts Luke by saying, if you won't turn, she will. If you will not turn to the dark side, perhaps she will. To which Luke says never and gets this big fight. Where eventually he cuts off his father's hand in a furious anger. With Vader basically yielding to Luke. And the Emperor then goads Luke Skywalker into killing Vader and taking Vader's place as the Emperor's right hand man. But what does Luke do? He sees Vader's hand, the circuitry of his wrist, 
since his hand has been severed. Luke also looks at his own hand and realizes that in giving in to his anger, he was becoming just like Darth Vader. But Luke took a deep breath, shut down his lightsaber, and tossed it away, saying, No, I'll never turn to the dark side. You failed, your highness. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Luke Skywalker was a Jedi in that moment. He had compassion on his father. He saved the galaxy by nonviolence. And he became what a Jedi should be. That, to me, is the greatest Luke Skywalker moment. Let me know what your favorite Luke moments are. My name is Brendan Moore, that noise you hear is my ventilator. And thank you for tuning in to Page Turners They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast. May the Force be with you, always.